the two-year COVID crisis put many markets on a wild ride, but few have been crazier than crude oil. The total collapse in 2020 to the brink of $100 a barrel. Today's Bloomberg Big Take story looks at the path for oil so far and where we might go from here. Uh, let's get more now with our European oil editor, James Heron, who joins me on set here in London. James, very good morning to you. So, uh, I mean, we're not all that far from $100 a barrel, $93 on Brent, when you consider that we were negative a couple of years ago. I was saying to you earlier that I remember uh, struggling to, to work out what on earth it meant to see negative oil prices two years ago whilst broadcasting from my living room, which is also something I never really expected to do. So how did we come from negative oil up to $100 almost? Well, the shock of that initial crisis is really what sowed the seeds for what we're seeing now. The response from major oil companies, OPEC ministers, shale oil drillers, they all pulled back massively, cut investments. OPEC was became really cautious and really wanted to protect, protect the price recovery at all costs. And that's what brings us to today, where the major oil companies aren't really growing production. The shale drillers are mostly still prioritizing giving back cash to their shareholders, not drilling in like crazy like before. And OPEC is still being super cautious and doesn't want to open the taps too wide and push down prices. What's it going to take for, you know, the U.S. has often been um, talked about as a swing producer lately because a lot of OPEC producers don't have any spare capacity. What's it going to take for Texas to turn on the taps again or for shale um, to start pumping out again, especially at $90 a barrel? Yeah, there's a lot of money to be made if you're willing to, to grow production. Um, but investors still aren't showing signs that they really want that. They want returns. They want companies to give them money back from the barrels they are producing. And that companies are drilling a bit more. They're planning to expand production a little bit. But it's not the kind of bonanza, crazy bonanza we saw in years past when oil was $100, when everyone was just chasing growth at whatever the cost. Well, and if we aren't seeing that investment into more production when it comes to fossil fuels, has as this wild ride oil has seen accelerated the transition to greener forms of fuel to clean energy? Uh, it's, it's partly a result of that transition, certainly. The, the major international companies, particularly in Europe, are really saying they're not going to try and really grow production of oil and gas in the past, and they're going to put more investment into renewable energy. Um, but then there's, there's also doubts about the, you know, the, the current cost of living crisis that's coming from these high prices, whether that could undermine support for green initiatives, carbon pricing, and so on. So it could go either way at this stage, and it's, it's difficult to tell how the current price increase will really affect things in the longer term.